today i'll be talking about uh, this topic role of hyperbaric oxygen in wound healing so this talk i gave it in baptist hospital in 2018 november um, so that's a hbot machine at uh, our center and there's a technician handling that so the reason you would be wondering why i'm giving this talk the reason i'm giving this talk is so i, I am a certified person in hyperbaric oxygen so i did this fellowship uh, sometime in 2007 from Royal Adelaide Hospital. So, so I could say probably I have expertise in hyperbaric oxygen because the HBOT in Royal Adelaide Hospital came under Department of Anesthesia and Intensive Care and they would offer basic and advanced fellowships. So this was a basic certificate course which, uh, which was a course for about a week. So after one week we have to give an exam after which we get certified. Okay. So the topics that I would be covering is a bit of a background on hyperbaric oxygen and what is the levels of recommendation for wound care and what are the mechanisms that would help in wound healing and do we have evidence for hyperbaric oxygen in diabetic foot ulcers, do we have evidence for non-diabetic foot ulcers and do we have evidence in osteomyelitis. So we look into the literature on that. So following uh, the wound healing, we look in the role of HBOT in crush injury and skeletal muscle compartment syndrome. And then we look into the role of hyperbaric oxygen in radiation oncology. And uh, we'll talk about our center's experience because I'm associated with this center as an advisor. So we will look into what has been our experience in Bangalore and take home message. So, so when you look at uh, how the hyperbaric oxygen has evolved so we need to look into the background of the wounds so when you look at the outpatient wound centers in USA so over 15 years these have increased from around 100 to 1000 so there has been increasing wound centers which are only catering to the needs of all the wound healing and wound rehabilitation so when you look at the role of hyperbaric oxygen in 19th century when the hyperbaric oxygen first came it was predominantly used for decompressive sickness in deep sea divers. So that is where its role was recognized and it was being used. In 1961 to 62 the indication for HPOT extended to other areas. So mainly it was considered as a treatment of choice for carbon monoxide poisoning and uh, very severe gas gangrene where other options would uh, would not really treat the patient. So, and HPOT was used as an adjunct. So, in 1977, I think there was a full-fledged uh, work in HBOT and a textbook of HBOT uh, hyperbaric oxygen came out in 1977, which means the indications for HBOT really widened in the last few years and that has been only increasing. So I'll have to say currently if you have to look into the textbook of hyperbaric oxygen it's quite a big book and, and it cuts across various specialities and multiple indications at this point of time for role of hyperbaric oxygen. So it is really an exciting field so I would request if anyone is interested to put their mind into this hyperbaric because this is a new paradigm of healthcare and it is very non-invasive and it has found to have tremendous beneficial effects in certain conditions. So we'll talk about the evidence uh, very specific to wound healing in this lecture. So when you look at the levels of recommendation, so if you look at urgent primary therapy, so where there is no other treatment, I think that comes in decompressive sickness or arterial gas embolism. So here patients would otherwise die if they do not get decompression with hyperbaric oxygen. So then the other level of recommendation is urgent but adjunctive. So if you look at adjunctive therapies in addition to medical and surgical therapy, then it would be carbon monoxide poisoning because even with oxygen, if patient is not doing well, then they would possibly benefit from hyperbaric. And if you see urgent adjunctive crush injuries and compartment syndrome figure in addition to gas gangrene and retinal artery occlusion. And if you look at non-urgent adjunctive, then you would see all the cancer related osteoradionecrosis or delayed osteoradionecrosis or radionecrosis of head and neck. So all the conditions pertaining to the radiation injuries. 
so then the fourth indications would be chronic wound and limb salvage and diabetic foot ulcers wegener's grade 3 4 5 hypoxic wound refractive osteomyelitis and compromised skin graft or flap come in chronic wound usage of hyperbaric oxygen so these are the sort of levels of recommendations that is reasonably accepted where you would use it as a only primary therapy urgent adjunctive or non urgent adjunctive and chronic therapies so <clears throat> we need to understand the mechanism of wound healing so when you typically look at uh, any diabetic foot or a chronic wound so the wound healing uh, take is taken through four stages first is the bleeding phase so where they would bleed and a blood clot is formed and then a granulation is formed so following a bleeding then there is an inflammatory phase where fibroblasts and macrophages tend to get activated then it goes through proliferation phase where there is extensive fibroblast proliferation and collagen production which helps in wound healing and the remodeling so in <clears throat> chronic wounds or diabetic wounds or arterial or venous wounds so what happens is the wound healing sort of gets stuck at the inflammatory phase and they and they develop into a chronic phase where there is only an ongoing inflammation but they do not progress to the proliferative phase and uh, hypoxemia uh, further worsens this whole inflammatory process i think so in any chronic wound i think we, we predominantly see the wounds being in this inflammatory phase and in a chronic ischemic stage so what does hyperbaric oxygen do so in this inflammation during this phase when we subject patient to hyperbaric because we know for sure that bacteria grows in hypoxic medium so because there is so, tremendous increase in the tissue levels of oxygen so there is mitigating of infection at the site of the wounds and there is reduction of inflammation and along with this what hyperbaric oxygen does is it improves the capillary perfusion because what you would expect is any wound healing you expect a good angiogenesis and good blood flow that's what we call as granulation tissue if that is not happening when there is no blood flow there is chronic hypoxia and inflammation gets perpetuated and that gets mitigated because it increases the capillary perfusion and it increases it sort of activates the neutrophils and their phagocytic function so basically the phagocytosis of the bacteria also is significantly enhanced with hyperbaric and it causes new angiogenesis it causes production of new blood vessels and obviously your tissue perfusion gets better so when there is this improvement in the basically when there is a reperfusion due to increase in the microcirculatory function there is something called reperfusion injury that sets in because of the reperfusion of the hypoxic tissue and this is uh, mediated by intracellular adhesion molecule 1 so which gets produced in that phase which causes which causes inflammation so what has found is so the presence of nitric oxide reduces the release of this intracellular adhesion molecule presence of nitric acid so this nitric oxide generally is absent in chronic wounds so when you have hyperbaric when patients are subjected to hyperbaric oxygen there is increased production of nitric oxide so in the presence of nitric oxide the production of intracellular adhesion molecule is mitigated and reperfusion injury and its deleterious effects are curtailed i think that is also a beneficial function of hyperbaric oxygen so that's what so what it leads is hyperbaric oxygen see what we need to understand is reperfusion is what we need in chronic wounds but reperfusion also leads to reperfusion injury so hyperbaric uh, facilitates and enhances reperfusion and the same context it reduces the reperfusion injury by increasing the nitric oxide and by thereby mitigating the production of iam1 and hyperbaric oxygen is known to enhance this fibroblast proliferation and it enhances fibroblast proliferation by activation of this proline hydroxylase which causes production of collagen so there is increase in the fibroblast proliferation and collagen formation which enhances the wound healing by production of this proline hydroxylase okay so those are the mechanisms how hbot helps at the tissue levels in improving local wound healing so if you are wondering whether there is any evidence at all in wound healing so these are the number of studies so if you look at it there are 8794 studies 
so far which have come out in literature about role of h bot in wound healing and if you look specifically for wound healing there are 440 studies there are 59 studies which look into role of h bot in flaps and grafts uptake and 121 studies which have looked into osteomyelitis role of h bot in osteomyelitis and if you see there are this 26 studies which are full text review uh, and there are seven sort of an articles which have come as full text review for surgical reconstruction and 11 full text review articles for refractory. So this is the stupendous body of evidence that is currently available for h -Bot. So it is only that we need to look out for the literature. There is ample amount of evidence on the role of h -Bot in chronic moods. So let us look one by one. So, so what I have done is I have tried to segregate uh, these the studies into high quality studies in diabetic foot ulcers, non-diabetic foot ulcers and other, other conditions. So there are three high quality studies which are randomized controlled trials in diabetic foot ulcers. So this was a study from Italy, Faglio et al. So this study was done in 68 patients. The mean age group was 63 plus or minus 9. So if you look at uh, these patients, they had Wegener 2 to 4 diabetic food. So they had bad diabetic wounds. 38 were subjected to h -bot, 33 were controlled. So if you look at the amputation rate, it was significantly less in h -bot group and that was statistically significant. So 9% had amputation as compared to 11% in the control group. So TCOM is tissue concentration of oxygen. So if you look at the tissue concentration of oxygen monitoring, so they had increase in 21 to 23 millimeter of mercury at the tissue level. And the H-POT they received, see we all breathe that one atmospheric absolute. For any therapeutic indications for H-POT, we need to give at more than two atmospheric absolute. So in this study, they gave 2.2 to 2.4 atmospheric absolute. And generally H-POT, we give it for 90 minutes session. So 60 to 90 minutes is the session. So in this study, they gave for 38 plus or minus eight sessions. Every session lasts for 60 to 90 minutes in, the, in our center. So that is uh, universally accepted. So here they have given it for 90 minutes. So in this 90 minutes, we need to understand around 20 minutes would be for getting them acclimatization. So effective sort of a H bot they get is usually 60 minutes. That's why we give it for 90 minutes. So this was a study from UK, Abidio et al, 2003. So 18 patients, the mean age was 71 plus or minus nine. So Wegener's 1 or 2. If you look at HBOT, uh, I think they had 38 sessions, control had 33 sessions. Control means where they did not produce, uh, give hyperbaric therapy. So healing at the end of 6 weeks, 100% in HBOT group as compared to control 54. That was statistically significant. And at the end of 1 year, complete healing happened in 5 out of 8. In control, there was 0 by 5. That was also statistically significant. And there was no adverse events. And tissue concentration of oxygen monitoring uh, showed tissue oxygenation more than 40 millimeter mercury. So I'll come about what we understand by tissue uh, concentration of oxygen. So this was a study from the French group, Kessler et al. in 2003. Study done in 27 patients, mean age 64 plus or minus 10. So Wegener's grade was 1 to 3. h -bot, 14 patients in h -bot, 13 in control. If you look at the tissue concentration of oxygen monitoring, it was significantly higher, which you would expect because you are giving HBOT. And day 15 healing was 41% in HBOT as compared to 27%. That was statistically significant. So if you look at these three high quality studies, all are randomized controlled trials. All three studies show favorable effect of hyperbaric oxygen as compared to control group with conventional therapies. So let's look into the medium quality studies in diabetic foot ulcers. So this was a Faglio et al. 1998, it was a retrospective cohort study. So age 63 plus or minus 9, 115 patients, 51 in h -bot and control 64. If you look at the amputation rate and Wegener's were bad, 2 to 4 was the Wegener's grade. So amputation was 7%, sorry, 14% as compared to 31%, that was statistically significant. And that was even over nil. And tissue concentration of oxygen monitoring was 28 plus or minus 13 millimeter mercury. So this was another study by US group, Zamboni et al, prospective cohort study. So here they looked at TCOM, which was 563 as compared to control. Because when you give h -bot, the intent is to show that what is the tissue level of oxygen, which is significantly higher. 
and uh, you seven week healing was significant in hbot group so this was a study from the sweden group 2002 prospective cohort studies age is 60 plus or minus 13 and as you see 38 patients hbot 17 control so tcom was very high tissue concentration of oxygen amputation as you see was significantly less so i think this is a big message because if you are able to salvage a limb and prevent amputation i think that is a huge benefit that is a very good outcome measure that one could aspire for isn't it so amputation was significantly less in and as you seen multiple studies are showing that it can avoid amputation 12% as compared to 33% healing happened in 76 when compared to 48% and adverse effects was only one and that was ear pain so this was again a study by italian group in 1987 baroni et al as you see amputation was significantly less 11% versus 40% and this was oriani et al again amputation 5% as opposed so if you look at all these studies i have shown you seven studies and at least half of them have looked at amputation where it was significantly less with hbot and i think that is a very important meaningful outcome measure which we can offer benefit to the patient okay so now so that is about diabetic foot ulcers now we look into the hbot study non diabetic foot ulcers there are six studies so grolman et al retrospective cohort study 69 so these were arterial ulcers where maybe it's thromboangiitis obliterans or peripheral vascular disease so as you see the hbot they got 2.5 ata for 90 minutes for 29 sessions as you see look at the healing 70% in hbot as compared to 11% in controls that was statistically significant and change in the tissue concentration of oxygen was more than 10 mm mercury so this was a study from sweden hamalund et al retrospective cohort study 61 of the age this was stasis ulcers which are venous ulcers hbot eight patients eight in control so four weeks the wound area had significantly come down to 78% as compared to 96% in uh, so the wound area was much bigger in control and six weeks area it had come down significantly in hbot and the wound area remained the same in control that was statistically significant So this was a study from the Israel where they looked at vascular. So you looked at arterial ulcer, venous ulcer, and vasculitic ulcer. This was a case series in 2007. Complete healing happened in 80% of the hbot. Partial healing in 11 point and no healing in 8.6%. And these were the studies which showed the role of hbot in enhancing or facilitating graft or flap uptake in skin grafts for cancer patients. So it had found immensely beneficial in facilitating the flap uptake. and uh, tissue concentration of oxygen was more than 50 mm mercury when the graft or flap uh, uh, uptake was looked into and there was 100% successful flap uptake so these are the four conditions where you looked at arterial ulcers venous ulcers vasculitis ulcers and graft and flap uptake it had a favorable effect so now so we have looked at uh, diabetic foot ulcers we have looked at non diabetic foot ulcers so all the studies seem to substantiate the fact that hbot is going to be helpful so now is there any role in refractory osteomyelitis because we know osteomyelitis can be quite a troubling clinical problem where patients would re- get relentlessly uh, long term antibiotics without much benefit so this was a study in 1986 where they looked at case series 38 patients with osteomyelitis of tibia and fibula and which was troubling them for 8 to 9 years and cure was achieved in 89% so i think that was something which was phenomenal and they gave 2.4 ata for 90 minutes for 45 sessions so this was murray et al these are all old studies case series so they looked at 40 patients and cure was achieved in 85% and recurrence happened in around 15% so this was a taiwanese study again a case series where they looked at the osteomyelitis and cure was achieved in 92% so all the old studies they do subscribe to the fact that hbot at least has a role in achieving curative end point to the osteomyelitis mm-hmm. okay so now we will move from diabetic foot ulcers to non diabetic foot ulcers and osteomyelitis to these acute situations crush injury and skeletal muscle compartment syndrome so whenever there is a trauma and hypoxemia so when there is a trauma to the muscle or trauma to the limb so and there is a hypoxemia so what really happens is there is lot of muscle edema that happens and this muscle edema compromises the vascular supply and that leads to the ischemic area 
when there is an and there is an irreversible devitalization of the muscle that happens and that is when you say that it is non viable and amputation is sort of suggested isn't it and the only treatment for this is you do extensive debridement and if that doesn't help if there is a huge vascular compromise you may have to do amputation so what happens see this is what i need to say so what happens is because there is tissue hypoxemia so what is expected is your tissue oxygen tension should be more than 30 mm mercury for any healing to happen that's why i kept showing in all the previous studies the tissue concentration of oxygen monitoring when you do so you expect this oxygen tension to be much higher than this to facilitate wound healing so any tissue which has oxygen tension lesser than this then you know there is a hypoxemic situation and healing does not happen so because of this so because of low oxygen tension angiogenesis does not happen and your ability of neutrophils or phagocytes to phagocytize the bacteria is thwarted so that does not happen in the presence of hypoxemia and along with hypoxemia we did talk a bit about reperfusion injury so when there is a reperfusion injury in hypoxemia what happens is the neutrophils get very sticky and gets adherent to the endothelium and because they get adherent to the endothelium so they do not transmigrate to the place of inflammation to phagocytize the bacteria and there is increased production of reactive oxygen species which causes vasoconstriction and further hypoxemia so these are the changes that happen so what happens with hbot because the mechanisms how does hbot helps so hbot increases the oxygenation at the tissue level and as i said oxygen tension should have more than 30 so it it does increase the oxygen tension at the tissue level and this leads to increase oxygen delivery at the cellular level and it causes increased oxygen diffusion and this diffusion is not dependent on the hemoglobin binding so because you are giving oxygen at a very high pressure so this oxygen diffuses independent of its binding to hemoglobin so it surpasses your whole oxy hemoglobin concept and addition to that it increases the microcirculation and because there is improve in the microcirculation there is reduction in the tissue edema and what we have found is when patients are put on hyperbaric oxygen so the interstitial fluid pressure which causes all the edema is less than the capillary perfusion pressure so when it is less than capillary perfusion pressure what it achieves is because your interstitial fluid pressure comes down your capillary perfusion pressure increases the capillaries that are otherwise clogged or blocked they open up and there is better blood flow better perfusion that happens and as i said the diffusion of oxygen within the blood is not dependent on the hemoglobin binding and that is where hbot has a direct ability to penetrate and cause oxygenation at the tissue level so it induces good amount of tissue oxygen concentration because the diffusion is independent of hemoglobin binding i think that is where distinct advantages happen in the wound healing so as you see if if you put patient on two atmospheric absolute of hyperbaric oxygen your blood oxygen content increases by 125% and oxygen tension in plasma and tissue level increases 10 fold about 1000% because there is extensive diffusion of oxygen at the tissue level i think these are the two variables or two mechanisms by which there is uh, incredible increase in the oxygen at the tissue level which facilitates all the healing process and mitigates all the infections at the tissue level and as i have already mentioned in the previous slides it mitigates reperfusion injury by inhibiting the binding of these neutrophils to these endothelial cells and it reduces the production of reactive oxygen species and it increases certain good uh, chemicals like catalase glutamate peroxidase and superoxide dismutase so by causing this it reduces the reperfusion injury so what about in crush injury i think uh, Uh, we we classify the crush injury based on gastillo open fracture crush injury scope so gastillo is a filipino orthopedic surgeon and there is a mangled score okay so so this is the score where we have to ascertain which are the patients who need amputation so if you see 
most of the thing you would uh, focus on devitalized tissue whether any wound where it is decompensated so where there is laceration with deep tissue where there is a decompensated tissue or devitalized tissue so so if you see the right side of the column those are the indications where tissue is devitalized and they may need amputation so the grading you, you can either do it on uh, gastillo score or mangled extremity severity score so grade 0 is the worst and grade 2 is the best so interpretation is you keep giving one point for different grading and 8 to 10 points is healthy host 4 to 7 is impaired and 0 to 3 is decompensated when there is a decompensated wound that is when there is an indication for possible amputation so you need to try to prevent them from progression into decompensated phase in any crush injury so that is our understanding so what happens in compartment syndrome so in compartment syndrome there is a self perpetuating cycle of edema and ischemia and because of this uh, there is a compartment that sets in where patient will have uh, terrible pain they will have paresthesia and there can be muscle weakness muscles become very tense and the and the movement of the limb also can be limited because of the compartment syndrome so when you look at compartment syndrome we look at the pressure at the tissue level so you need to have more than 45 millimeter if you have more than 45 millimeter mercury uh, then you know compartment is set in so if it is an impaired host more than 30 to 40 millimeter suggests that there is compartment setting in if it is a devitalized tissue or decompensated more than 20 to 30 millimeter itself will qualify as a compartment syndrome so compartment is where there is increase in the pressure in the compartments or in the soft tissue which makes the tissue non-viable because of the hypoxemia that sets in so what what are the measures for compartment syndrome compartment syndrome is an emergency so you need to plan immediate surgery if patient would not benefit from surgery then they have to be subjected to the hyperbaric if patient is subjected to surgery to release the compartment post surgery to prevent further decompensation of the host i think hbot is found to be beneficial so how does hbot helps as i said hbot helps uh, by preventing this neuropathy by preventing the muscle ischemia and by reducing the swelling and hbot should be considered where there is failure of demarcation between the healthy and the devitalized tissue so Basically, HPOT helps in all this. It improves the ischemia and it reduces the swelling and minimizes the neuropathy and helps in uptake of the flap or graft that you may have put. So, is there evidence and what is the suggested HPOT? So, acute HPOT indication is crush injuries and compartments. So, in crush injuries, the suggestion is or the recommendation is HPOT has to be provided within 4 to 6 hours. And, and 2 to 2.4 atmospheric absolute for 90 minutes to 120 minutes is what is recommended. So the treatment regime is HPOT for crush injuries is 3 times a day for 2 days and 2 times a day. So 2 times a day means 2 into 90 minutes for 2 days and once a day for 2 days. So this is the regime. Total number of sessions to be given is 12 sessions. In threatened flaps where you have done a surgery and then have put flap and you believe that flap is getting devitalized, HBOT has to be given twice daily for 5 days for 10 sessions. If there is an infection of the flap or remodeling or reabsorption, so the recommended HBOT is twice a day for 7 days and once a day for 7 days, total of 21 sessions. So these are the recommendations. For reperfusion injury, once a day HBOT is what is recommended. So what about for compartment syndrome treatment regime is you give HBOT twice a day for 7 days for residual com complications you would give twice a day for 7 to 10 days. So these are the recommendations for acute HBOT where crush injury and skeletal muscle compartment is a medical emergency and HBOT needs to be given early but the sessions is not typically for 30 to 40 sessions it is only for 3 to 4 days up to 12 sessions as you see. Okay. So what about the evidence for crush injury? So the crush injury, if you do a literature review, so this was an Israeli study where they gave six HBOTs per day, Shramak et al. They had 100% recovery in crush injury. Otherwise, in a patient who possibly would have lost a limb. And this was a British study where they gave three hyperbaric oxygen per day, loader et al. 80% recovery, one HBOT 59. As you see, 
the response rate is directly proportional to the number of sessions we give so that's why we have come out with these recommendations where we give three times in first two days twice a day for two days and once a day so we build it slowly so the more number of h word session is what they need in acute crush injuries so disardo et al was a did a systematic review of nine studies and eight studies showed beneficial effects of h word in crush injuries and this was a french study by bosher et al randomized control trial in crush injuries complete healing happened in 94% as compared to 33% in control group and additional surgery additional surgical debridement or the need for additional surgery was significantly reduced when hbot was given in crush injuries and for compartment syndrome bartlett et al study so the skeletal muscle compartment hyperbaric with surgery versus surgery i think if you gave hbot as an adjunct to the surgery showed significant improvement in the electrophysiological muscle function so so there is ample evidence that in crush injuries and skeletal muscle hbot can save limbs and can reduce the need for repeated surgeries i think this is what we have found so what is the levels of recommendation from american health um, american uh, heart association uh, so hbot in crush injury the level of recommendation is grade 1b and uh, hbot in skeletal muscle compartment syndrome uh, the level of recommendation is uh, grade 2a um so so that is the american heart association level of recommendation so grade 1b which is a strong recommendation level of evidence is moderate in crush injury skeletal muscle is uh, moderate recommendation level of uh, evidence is reasonably good so now they have looked at rational based evidence appropriate indications so what they suggest is if you look at the wounds from 0 to 2 because 2 is the best so they give a score of 0 to 10 so this is the scoring they give for the different types of wound so if you have the score more than 5 then uh, the suggestion is hbot has to be offered so these wounds like crush injury if you have uh, two points for you know all the mechanisms and all that so if more than 5 is your score for these wounds crush injury i think this is the scoring i think hbot is indicated so they have done a utilization review to see the usage of hbot so the suggestion is as i said three three hbot therapies to be recommended for skeletal muscle compartment syndrome and post surgery for 7 days to 14 days hbot could be considered for skeletal muscle compartment syndrome so what is the cost impact so what they have found is i think hbot if you provide i think there is 50% complications can be mitigated and that way you would save the cost so it is a cost saving measure because it avoids amputation and it reduces complication rate by 20% by avoiding amputation and reducing complication rate to 20% i think it weighs better with regards to offering hbot than incurring 50% of the complications by not offering hbot so by offering them you would curtail the cost by avoiding amputation and by reducing the complication rate and in skeletal muscle compartment syndrome by offering hbot they have shown 75% reduction in the cost for the patient by uh, avoiding repeated surgeries and uh, achieving better outcomes so brighton et al uh, in 1977 did a review where he suggested in us they have around 100000 per year of non healing wounds and the cost per patient was 140000 so so this cost could possibly be mitigated by subjecting them to hbot so that your healing is enhanced and the cost could be curtailed so that is about all the diabetic foot ulcers non diabetic foot ulcers vasculitis ulcers and crush injuries and skeletal muscle compartment syndrome so let's look into some of the other studies so this was a whether hbot has a role in pediatrics so this was a study which came from sweden Uh, where hyperbaric oxygen in the treatment of post operative infections in pediatric patients with neuromuscular spine deformity so what uh, the background suggests is the complication rate in such surgeries is 30 to 65% and the main complication is infection and when infection sets in when they are doing a surgery for neuromuscular spine deformity with with metals or hardware 
So the whole problem is if infection sets in, then you have a problem with fusion and then the deformity correction, you will have problem because infection obviously will prevent all this fusion and deformity correction. So the standard treatment is again surgery, you would put drains and you continue to give antibiotics and back dressing. So these are the only sort of a solutions. After you have done a surgery for spine deformity with metal, then you have infections. The only solution is you have to do surgery, drains or removal of the implant. So this study was to see whether HBOT helps. So this study was done in 2003 to 2005. Inclusion is to make sure that patient did not have infection in the last two years. They did not have UTI. They had normal bloods. So they took 68 patients. These are all pediatric patients who underwent non-idiopathic spine deformity correction. Okay. And uh, six patients had infection and they gave HBOT 2.5 to 2.8 ATA for 75 minutes once a day for five days a week. And they saw these six patients who had infections, which means either they should undergo surgery or continued antibiotics or maybe removal of implant. They had healed fusion in all patients. These are pediatric. And the median duration of therapy was three months. And there was no need for implant change or implant removal. That's a big thing. So they did not need the removal of implant. And follow-up was done for 54 months and they were all perfectly okay. So the mechanism, the important mechanism of uh, action is basically by uh, why this happens when there is a reduced oxygen or hypoxemia, biofilm forms. When, when you subject to hyperbaric oxygen because of increased levels of tissue oxygenation, this biofilm formation can be subjugated or mitigated. So that is where it significantly helps in wound healing and you don't need to consider this implant removal which can be disastrous for these pediatric patients. So conclusions from this study was uh, hyperbaric oxygen reduced the number of revision surgeries, reduced the duration of antibiotics and reduced the hospital length of stay in this pediatric age group. So this was the pictures from this article where they had a complete uh, fusion and they did not need removal of these implants. Okay. So this was also the picture that came from that article. So, so we looked at uh, in pediatric also, HBOT has a significant role in um, you know, improving outcomes in patients who undergo implant surgeries. So let's look into the orthopedic practice. So this was a in vitro study, it was a animal study where they looked at the proliferation of osteoblasts to see whether the fracture healing happens better when there is, uh, when HBOT is, you know, uh, when, when they are subjected to HBOT. So they tried to culture this osteoblasts in uh, cough serum, in fetal cough serum, in 10% fetal cough serum. So they subjected this blood to HBOT 2.4 ATA for 90 minutes and 30 minutes and 1.5 ATA for 90 minutes and 30 minutes. So they took the blood where the, it was a fetal cough serum and they put osteoblasts and they see by subjecting to hyperbaric oxygen whether there was a good proliferation of this osteoblast. And what they found is they looked at the proliferation of osteoblasts by this WST1 assay. For 10 days and these were the results. So if you look at this were two groups, one group got hyperbaric oxygen at 2.4 ATA, one group got at 1.5 ATA and they were subdivided into 90 minutes group and 30 minutes. So day 3 if you look at proliferation it was higher across the group. So when they looked at day 4 it was higher in these three groups but not higher in this group. Day 6 it was higher. So basically this slide essentially tells you by subjecting the blood to hyperbaric oxygen, there was higher proliferation of osteoblasts. So what that means to humans is, by subjecting to hyperbaric oxygen in fracture, it enhances the fracture healing or fracture union by enhancing the proliferation of osteoblasts. So this was the preamble for that study. So the conclusion is hyperbaric oxygen increases osteogenic activity and improves bone formation. And this may be very useful in patients with comp compound fractures with osteopenia or bone loss where hyperbaric oxygen helps in osteoblast proliferation and improves the union and healing of the fractures. And it promotes bone fracture healing and bone regeneration. Okay? So it increases calcium, it increases bone nodular formation and increases ALP activity.
so this was the figure where you see this was day 7 this was the patients uh, without hbot and this was the patients with hbot where there was increased proliferation so this is the control this is the hbot of there, there is extensive proliferation of osteoblasts so do we have any studies from india there are very uh, scarce number of studies very few studies and this study if you see it came from indian journal of aerospace medicine from command hospital i would think so hyperbaric oxygen role in gangrene so this was a 59 this was a case report which came from uh, india from the command hospital so 59 year old male diabetic for 15 years chronic iliac artery stenosis and as you see there is a gangrene that has set in and uh, here hyperbaric oxygen was given at uh, what one would expect 2.5 ata because uh, as i said about 2 ata is what would be therapeutic so they gave it for 40 minutes so i would say the current recommendation is minimum we give it for 60 to 90 minutes they gave for 30 sessions and post hbot patient had pain relief after 10 sessions and surprisingly in this particular study they have cited that bilateral lower limb recanalization of stenosis area happened the iliac artery stenosis that was there there was a recanalization of the stenosis area after 30 sessions and there was enhanced wound healing as you see there is a reduction in the gangrene size so and the same group published another case report this was a patient with 24 years elbow deformity as you see there is a malunion and there is an open injury so supracondylar corrective dome osteotomy plus distal humerus with bipolar plating was done for this patient as you see there is no healing so there was a wrist drop with acute compartment as i said acute compartment syndrome is an emergency where one would give hbot as an acute therapy so they gave hbot in this patient surgery was done promptly for wrist drop and antibiotics with hbot was given at 2.5 ata 40 minutes for 30 sessions and you saw there was a complete healing of this wound okay so this is our indian experience from our indian published literature so this was another study from sweden again looking at amputation single center double blinded randomized control trial role of hyperbaric oxygen therapy facilitates healing of chronic foot ulcers in patients they gave for five days per week for eight weeks 40 sessions inclusion criteria was bad wounds vaginas grade two to four so this was a study which came in 2010 so they had 94 patients 48 in hbot group 42 in control group as you see complete healing happened in 52 percent as compared to 29 percent in control group statistically significant and more than 35 hbot sessions were given in the hbot group and adverse events were low so this was a systematic review of hyperbaric oxygen in the management of chronic wounds which came from germany so this was a meta-analysis looking at six studies five trials and diabetic ulcers and this is a very important study which showed major amputation was significantly reduced in hbot group and that was statistically significant but minor amputation it had no influence and for venous ulcers there was significant reduction in the wound size so this was uh, also a recent meta-analysis which came from germany showing that hbot was hugely beneficial in reducing major amputation which is a very important outcome measure so these are all the list of studies that you can go through on the role of hyperbaric oxygen so just a last slide on radiation oncology because these radiation injuries can be quite devastating can be quite troubling so indications for hyperbaric is in radiation necrosis or osteoradio necrosis or it can be even used as a prophylaxis to prevent this necrosis of healthy tissue because when you are giving radiation the healthy tissue may also get affected in the whole process so one could be subjected to hbot prior to the radiation therapy so that the healthy tissue does not get affected or uh, hyperbaric oxygen is known to enhance the effects of radiotherapy so there are multiple studies which have looked at uh, subjecting patient to pre-radiation hbot to make the radiation therapy lot more effective so there, there is a huge role and there are multiple studies to that effect and hyperbaric oxygen has shown to reduce brain necrosis uh, following radiation and there has been 68 percent re response and cerebritis uh, occurrence rate also significantly reduces and hyperbaric oxygen reduces all the other radiation effects like pneumonitis myelitis or cystitis or optic neuritis so all these are radiation ill effects which hyperbaric oxygen is known to mitigate or, or minimize the effects so the take-home evidence 
uh, from the whole lecture is there is as you see there is a good evidence for hyperbaric oxygen in reducing the risk of amputation in diabetic foot ulcers, crush injuries and skeletal muscle compartment. So there is no debate on this chronic wounds you have either diabetic or non-diabetic arterial venous vasculitis hyperbaric oxygen has a good role and you saw multiple studies and it I think it can be limb saving and it can save the limbs when h bot is provided in an acute injuries like crush injuries and skeletal muscle compartment syndrome. So h bot promotes partial and complete healing of problem wounds. h bot promotes healing in radiation necrosis, osteoradio necrosis, pre-radiotherapy and for prophylaxis. What about moderate evidence? Moderate evidence of h bot is present in promoting healing of arterial ulcers and h bot promotes healing of vasculitis and calcifatic wounds. HBOT promotes salvage of compromised flaps and grafts and HBOT promotes remission of refractory osteomatis. For all this there is moderate evidence and HBOT reduces the if you look at the cost benefit ratio HBOT reduces the overall treatment costs by preventing recurrent repeated surgeries and by preventing repeated infections and reducing the use of antibiotics. So the benefit outweighs the risk. And h -bot, one thing we need to understand is h -bot is absolutely safe. So it absolutely has no complications. Okay. So, so that would be my take on that. So I would end this talk with, uh, with a quote. Work on yourself daily. I think the reason I say that is I think we have to open up our horizons in understanding the role of h -bot in varied health conditions that we deal with. In, uh, and it could be used as an adjunct to all the conventional therapies. In that we could probably improve the outcome. So I'll just share a brief experience. So what has been uh, experience of our center in averting limb amputation. So very quickly I'll go through. So this was a patient 87 year old female who came with left lower lobe acute on chronic limb ischemia and uh, this patient was suggested limb amputation uh, and uh, I think in one of the major hospitals and this patient came to us and uh, and as you see surgery uh, they had done the surgery and that had failed and this was the patient had difficulty in walking and amputation was already suggested to them and it was a non-healing wound. So we gave HBOT, pain relief happened at the end of 6 to 7 sessions for this patient in our center and as you see there, there was a gross discoloration as you see like this and as you see there is a better tissue perfusion and after 10 sessions you saw the discoloration significantly coming down and you saw after 20 sessions there is almost near complete wound healing. So this is in a patient who was suggested limb amputation after the surgery. Okay. So, so this was a, so a patient who came with a discharge from non-healing flap because this was a cancer patient where they had done a skin flap and as you see there is an ongoing discharge. So this patient had a carcinoma of right buccal mucosa, had undergone composite resection and had taken concurrent chemo radiation. So we gave 2.5 ATA for 90 minutes for 20 sessions and pain and swelling had come down. First discharge from the operated flap had come down and if you see uh, you know the discharge has completely stopped here. So there is complete healing of the wound. So this was another patient where there is a non-healing ulcers post radiation. So this was a 37 year old female diabetes and hypertension who had adeno cystic carcinoma of the left salivary gland post radiation and non-healing ulcer in the leg. So we gave 2.5 ATA for 90 minutes for 20 sessions and if you see all these patients, uh, if you see the session, the recommended session is minimum 30 to 45 but in India because of various reasons, cost and other things, we are seeing tremendously good response at the end of 20 sessions and after 20 sessions since they find so much improvement, patient would stop h -bot. I think that has been our experience. So as you see chief complaints was pain and swelling, difficulty in speaking. So the pain and swelling reduced after 10 to 12 sessions, ulcer healing started and uh, healing was improved after 20 sessions. So this was another patient uh, who came after excision of arteriovenous malformations and uh, so you see it's a very gory wound and uh, obviously h -bot was started at 2.5 ATA, it's an ongoing therapy and patient uh, is having a good improvement in the wound healing. So that's about HBOT. So thank you very much. I think uh, so. J just go through the literature. There's a huge ocean of literature in HBOT, and whatever I've spoken today is only wounds. So there's a lot of other indications where HBOT has a huge role. So they they are looking at evidence of HBOT in uh, cardiac 
failure and in the post and preventing stent occlusion they are looking at the role of hbot in infertility so we are looking at hbot in the post trauma traumatic brain injury and strokes so so we'll cover all this subsequently so thank you very much